Welcome back, Dram Fam, to another episode on The Whiskey Diary, where this week we're talking about something just a little bit different. Let me explain. Every so often, I'm going to try and bring you something that's either old, rare, or interesting. And this week, I have in front of me a 1980s bottle of Yamazaki, a Japanese whiskey. So this was actually sent to me by a guy called Mark Littler, and he has a channel uh, that specifically deals with whiskey investment. As you probably guessed, I'm much more of a drinker. I'm not one really for investment, but there is a huge market for whiskey investment. And I'll, I'll link his channel down below, where you can find tons of videos about you know what to look for, where to put your money, and bottles like this. Now, what's really interesting about what he does is he takes these rare, old and interesting bottles and he opens them and he sends these around to a number of people. So we've got No Nonsense Whiskey, we've got the guys at Whiskey Wednesday on here and uh, I, know, I know it's been to a few others as well, uh, as you can see by the, uh, the contents. And he basically gives us an opportunity to try whiskies that ordinarily, you know, a lot of people wouldn't be able to try and um, gives us an opportunity to tell you what they taste like. So I'll, I'll, as I said, I'll link his channel and a bunch of his other resources down below. And I'll link to some of the other videos that have been made by, you know, Vin at No Nonsense Whiskey and whatever else. So you guys can check those out too. So what is it? This is a Suntory Pure Malt Whiskey. It is a 12 year old. Now, Suntory were wine merchants and they opened a distillery under the name Yamazaki in the 1920s. They produced a number of whiskies over the years, but it wasn't until 1984 when they produced their first single malt whiskey, which is this one here. It's, uh, it's for the Japanese market, as you can tell. All the, uh, all the writing on the back is, uh, is Japanese. And I mean, the label has definitely seen some action in its time, so, but we can just about make out what it is. It is a 750 milliliter bottle and it was distilled to 43% ABV. For reference, the modern Yamazaki 12 is available on Master of Malt for £135 a bottle. And while this is quite a unique specimen, being you know a, a, a first distillation of a a quite a well-known Japanese whiskey. These go for between 200 and 400 pounds a bottle at auction. Quite honestly, it's a, it's a relatively affordable sort of historic statement whiskey. So let's dip in and have a taste, shall we? I haven't tasted any of this yet. I've not even opened the bottle. So I'll be very interested to see what this has to offer. Interestingly, it's a screw cap. Right away, I'm getting some fantastic sort of floral iced tea notes coming through. Very sweet iced tea. It smells surprisingly rich. Sort of a mint chocolate, like mint, uh, mint hot chocolate. Maybe a very subtle smokiness. It's definitely not a smoky whiskey by any stretch of the imagination, but I'm getting that subtle sort of barrel char kind of smell. A nice oaky woodiness as well. Quite strong as well, considering its its age and and how long it's been sitting around. Usually I, I find they tend to mellow out quite a lot, but this still smells quite bright. But it's definitely got like a, a darker a darker note behind it. This to me does not 
immediately strike me as uh, Japanese. While I was editing this, I thought I should probably mention, I am no Japanese whiskey expert. I've had a few, and I'm sure there are tons of Japanese whiskies out there that have, you know, an incredible richness. But to me, Japanese whiskies tend to be a lot lighter and a lot more easygoing than this. So, you know, that's just my experience thus far anyway, as I was saying. Yeah, I find a lot of, personally, I find a lot of the Japanese whiskies to be quite light. But the, while this is quite light initially, definitely has like a, a heavier, darker richness to it. Absolutely fantastic into the palette. Almost champagne-like right away. A little bit, a little bit harsh, maybe. It's got some more of those more traditional kind of grainy flavors coming through. Definitely a distinct woodiness, an oakiness. Almost a, almost a fresh oak to it as well. Finish wise, it's quite two dimensional. Um, it's got like a, it, there's, there's a spiciness to it. I, I don't know whether that's the harshness of it. I mean, I wouldn't say it was an especially harsh whiskey, but it's not as light and delicate as I would expect. Uh, that finish has got like a, 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 a definite spiciness to it. Not like, um, not like a chili spice, but almost like a, almost like a chipotle, kind of slightly smoky, peppery, maybe a little bit of like a, a spikiness to it. Right on the tail end of it, as you revisit, almost, almost like an apple, apple cider. Yeah, it's almost like an apple cideriness to it. In summary, this is a little different to what I was expecting. I wasn't expecting it to be quite as rich and complex as it is for a Japanese whiskey. Uh, I definitely wasn't expecting to be 43% ABV either, um, given its age. Would I spend two to 400 pounds on a bottle of this just to sit here and drink it? Probably not. Realistically, I think there are a lot better whiskies out there for a much, much lower price point. If you're buying this, you're not buying this to drink it. Or at least I certainly wouldn't recommend you go out and buy one of these to drink it. it it's a good whiskey, but it's not a 200 to 400 pound whiskey. This is definitely for the investors. And I'd really like to thank Mark Littler for the opportunity to try some of this. This isn't something I'd ever go out of my way to buy. In fact, it's not even something I really thought I'd ever get the chance to try, given its age and rarity. So thank you very much, Mark. Um, I'll leave all of his details down in the description below. Overall, it's an interesting whiskey, and I, I definitely think you know it would keep up with a more modern expression. Um, I have unfortunately not had the chance to try any of the Yamazaki 12, uh, the, the sort of the modern version. So I'd be super, super keen to get my hands on some, kind of give it a side by side and see how this compares to that. Overall, though, it's a very good whiskey for drinking, at least. Not sure how it stands up on the investment front, but. I definitely enjoyed it. And that's enough from me. Thank you very much for watching. If you've enjoyed this episode, please do leave a like down below and hopefully we'll get a chance to share some more old, rare or interesting bottles. If you'd like to support the channel, please hit the subscribe button and you can hit the bell icon to be notified whenever we upload. And on that note, Slangevar.